Are you looking for a stock in the IT space that's paying an above average dividend and has the potential for growth? If you're looking for something like that, you're going to want to see the stock that I've come across this week, and I want to share it with you. So stay tuned. Hey guys, Kevin Burgess back again with another video. Hey, I just want to point out that things are beginning to take shape. We have moved from the mountains of North Carolina to a farm in Alabama. And you can see that I have brought my favorite picture with me. This is the Norman Rockwell coin collector picture. I love it because I do collect coins as well. I have a pretty nice coin collection and I really enjoy that. So this is a picture that was actually given to me by a close friend of mine and I really enjoy it. If you're new to the channel, my name is Kevin Burgess. I've been investing for a lot of years and am now retired. I have a dividend growth portfolio and I really enjoy following, tracking and analyzing companies and stocks that I believe would fit well into that portfolio. My goal in doing this channel is not to tell you what you should invest in. It is simply to tell you what I'm doing. And if you like what I'm doing, then maybe that's something you should consider for your portfolio. If you don't like what I'm doing, then you do your own thing but at least you can see how somebody else is doing it. And I think there's some value in that for you. Certainly value in it for me because I get to uh, tell you what I'm thinking about. And um, it really gives me some accountability as, uh, as I look at these companies to make sure that I do my due diligence because I don't want to share anything with you that I haven't fully vetted myself. There is a stock that I want to talk to you about today that is in the IT space, has an above average dividend, and looks like it has potential for growth moving forward. So with that, let's get started. Cisco is a firm that has core products of switches and routers. This connects computing devices to networks and computer networks with each other. They also have infrastructure platforms that help direct internet traffic. So this is their core, and we're gonna find out that this is about 56% of their business. They now have about 44% in this other area here, which is much faster growing. It has to do with application security and services, technical support, subscriptions, and software. So here's some insight from Simply Safe Dividends. They say this, there is no end in sight to the number of consumer and business devices requiring a network connection. While this doesn't guarantee Cisco's future success, the mission critical nature of most of the company's products and services provides some comfort. And this is what I'm starting to like about Cisco, guys. Management has also embarked on a multi-year transition to shift Cisco's model from primarily a hardware company into more of a software and software services business. Over 40% of Cisco's revenue is recurring, reducing volatility and making the firm's ecosystem stickier. But like with any company, Cisco has its challenges. They face intense competition. They've got to contend with disruptive trends as new technology comes out re regarding uh, internet infrastructure. But it is important to point out that Cisco has a strong foundation in the work that they do, as well as having an, a double A minus credit rating. So. Things are looking pretty good, but there are some risks for, for Cisco. So as you know, there's really five things that I like to look at when I'm looking at a company to invest in. The first one are the financials, and financials are historical, as you know, and they look at how the business has performed up to this point over time. The second thing I like to look at is how do they allocate the cash that they make as a business. There's really about five ways that a company can use its free cash. One is that they can store it in their balance sheet. Number two, they can uh, issue dividends for their shareholders. Number three, they can buy back shares. Number four, they can reinvest in the business. Or number five, they can pay down debt. So any of those five ways are very valid ways to use their, their cash flow. And I want to see what decisions they're making based on what their business needs are. So item number three for me is the valuation. Valuation is important. It means that I don't want to overpay for a business. I would love to underpay for a business, but I am willing to pay a fair price for a good, solid dividend growth company. 
The fourth thing I like to look at is their strategy. What is their strategy? Are, are, is it a cohesive strategy? Can I understand their strategy? Do I believe they understand their strategy? And are they able to measure and manage that strategy? And the fifth thing I like to look at is, is the management team capable of carrying out that strategy? So let's take a look at some summary information on Cisco. They have a dividend safety rating of 91. That's pretty good. They have a dividend yield of 3.07%, and they have a market cap of around $209 billion. Pretty big company. Let's look at their dividend growth pattern here. The latest was pretty small at 2.6%. That was very recent here in February 23. The last five years, however, they have a five-year CAGR of 6%, which is not lighting the world on fire, but it's not uh, terrible either. And then you can look in the last 10 years, it's been 18%, so very fast. That's a pretty nice little chart there uh, of dividend growth. They have a dividend growth streak of 11 years. Their current dividend is $1.56 per share. And according to Simply Safe Dividends, it uh, looks like they are reasonably valued. They have a, uh, a dividend yield of 3.07% versus their five-year average of somewhere around 3%. Their uh, forward P.E. ratio is a little lower than, than their historical average, about 12.8 versus 15.1 over the last five years. And if we look at the IT sector, uh, Cisco is at a 12.8 P.E. ratio, while the information technology sector is at a 20.1. Let's look at some of the financial metrics here. Earnings per share, it's up and to the right. I really uh, like this earnings per share movement. They also have free cash flow per share. Other than here in uh, 2022, it uh, dropped to about uh, 3.06. I didn't look at why that drop occurred. It could be actually that they invested in capital or an acquisition of some sort. But um, it's just that one-year blip, and then now it's back in the last 12 months uh, to $3.75, which is a pretty nice jump from 21, which is at 3.50. Their sales aren't uh, growing really quickly, but it looks to me like I, uh, they do have the potential uh, for growth with their new strategy. I want to talk about that in a few minutes. Their return on invested capital, you know that's one of my favorite uh, metrics to look at. It is uh, at 28%, so really high uh, return on invested capital. Their net debt is zero. While they do have some debt, they have more cash than they have debt. And you can see here that their interest coverage ratio is 36.32, with eight being, uh, you know, being above eight being the preference for most companies. So they have a debt structure that is well managed, in my opinion. So let's look at some of the capital allocation. They have earnings payout ratio somewhere in the mid 40s. Here in the next 12 months, it's going to be around 39 percent. Their free cash flow ratio is in the same range, somewhere around 40%. Taking a look at their shares outstanding, they have bought back quite a few shares, uh, over a billion shares in the last 10 years. So they have really done a nice job of buying back shares. So let's move on and look at the valuation. According to Morningstar, their fair value is at $56. I put a lot of uh, credence on Morningstar's valuation because they do a some of the parts valuation here. They have even raised on February 15th, they raised the valuation from $54 to $56 based on their strong second quarter and terrific guidance for the remainder of the year. According to Morningstar, they have an economic moat that is wide and they have a stable trend and their capital allocation is exemplary. So they also agree that they have good app capital allocation. Some thoughts around their business strategy. We view Cisco Systems as the dominant force in enterprise networking and expect it to retain its strength in both legacy and future networks. In addition, they say we believe Cisco's core markets offer slow but steady growth with upside from newer software and cloud-centric businesses. And they say here, in our view, Cisco's shareholder return policies are superb. So when it comes to capital allocation, we like a balance. We like a balance between investing in the business, paying off debt, and uh, giving money back to the shareholders. So as long as that balance is there, I'm in good shape with that. Let's take a look at FastGraphs and where they have uh, Cisco. This goes all the way back to 2002. 
And uh, as you can see, they were trending above the blue line at that point. Then somewhere around 08, they dropped below that and pretty much have been below that until about the 18, 19 time frame. And, and uh, look a little bit cyclical actually here over the last few years. Uh, they look to be down at the bottom part of that cycle. They are below the um, 15 times earnings, which is a good time, I believe, to invest in Cisco. Is it going to be the bottom? I don't know. It might go back down, but I do believe it is a uh, at, at least at fair value, if not about 10% below fair value. Also using fast graphs, we can actually plot out how much we think we might get from this investment. So if we start here um, on February the 17th with a price of $50.77, they're currently trading at a PE of 14.2. If that moves to 15 times earnings by 2025, then the return on that would be 11.63% per year, which is not too bad. But what if it goes above that? What if we're back here into this uh, top orange line here, which is around 18 times earnings, that ends up with nearly a 20% annual return? So, and that would be total return. That would include both dividends as well as capital appreciation. Let's look at some of their quarter two uh, earnings highlights. I just reported earnings here a couple of weeks ago. And the main thing I want to focus on here is this business transformation. They have annualized recurring revenue, uh, which is up 6.6% year over year. And they had total subscription revenue that represented 44% of total sales. Remaining performance obligations are up 4.4% year over year. So what does that mean? What that means is they have these metrics that measure their business transformation. The first one is annualized recurring revenue because they believe that every sale that they have today has the potential to be re-upped in the following year. So they annualize the sales that they have today. And not only does that kind of give a sense for whether revenues are going up or down, it also looks at the opportunity moving forward. So if we see that they're up 4% year over year, then they have the opportunity to improve their uh, existing sales by 4% year over year. The other way they're measuring this business transformation is through annualized recurring revenues. You see they call that ARR, which is up 6% year over year. This ARR really has two categories. Those categories are deferred revenue and unbilled contract revenue. The deferred revenue are dollars that are contractually obligated over the next 12 months. And the unbilled contract revenue is anything that is contractually obligated past 12 months. So it could be a five-year contract, for instance. So years two through five would show up as unbilled contract revenue as opposed to deferred revenue. So hopefully that didn't confuse you, but it's important to recognize that they are measuring their ability to renew sales. And also they're measuring the pipeline of revenues that are out into the future. And with both of those being up, one being up 4%, one being up 6%, I think we're seeing some pretty steady growth in revenues from Cisco. Okay, so the question is, what am I going to do with Cisco? Cisco, I believe, is fairly valued. It's a, it's a bit undervalued, maybe about 10%. So there's a little bit of margin of safety. I think uh, for me, if the market opens up this week and it's down, and, and let's say that Cisco goes below $50 per share, I'm liable to start a position uh, in Cisco. Won't pick up a lot of shares, but I'll pick up a few shares. And that's really a way for me to get started in a portfolio. If the stock goes down, I will pick up more shares. And, and uh, you know, depending on how low it goes, I will average down in that stock. And if it shoots up, then I got a few shares, but, but not too many. Hey, also, I want to ask your opinion on something. I am considering doing some live videos, and I want to get your thoughts as a, as a group around whether that would be helpful, whether that would be something you would be interested in. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to get that done at this point, but I am doing some reconnaissance around whether that is something that is of interest to, to my crowd. So if you uh, guys are interested in that 
and uh, you think that would be helpful, just leave me a comment below that says yes, and I'll know what that means. If no, then leave me that comment as well and just say no, and I'll know what that means. So it'll be helpful for me to kind of help make that decision. There's a lot that goes into it. It needs to be consistent, and, and I get that. That's kind of hard with my schedule. But if it's something that the, the uh, community wants, then I, I would be very open to doing that. So let me know in the comments below what you think about that and also what you think about Cisco. And if you like videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to have you along for the journey as we kind of grow our portfolios together. And with that, I will see you on the next video.